Gamers, today we're gonna to be talking about system latency. In Valorant, that's the time between when you click your left mouse button and when you see your gun actually firing on your monitor. The lower your latency, the faster your actions are processed, potentially giving us an advantage over our opponents. We're gonna take a whole bunch of measurements today and learn how we can optimize for low system latency on our machines. To measure system latency, we're gonna be using NVIDIA's Latency Display Analysis Tool, or LDAT. The LDAT is a hardware device that allows us to take measurements of not only latency from the game, but also from the operating system and from our hardware. It has two sensors that help make this happen. The first is a luminance sensor. We'll put the luminance sensor over our gun's barrel and it will detect whenever the muzzle flashes. This will give us a timing of when the image is actually rendered on our monitor. The second part is a mouse. This mouse plugs into our computer just like a normal mouse, but it's also wired into the LDAT device so that it knows when we've pressed the left mouse button. Taken together, we get a full and complete picture of our end-to-end -end system latency. I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up. After the edit, I'll show you what the software looks like and we'll run a bunch of experiments. I've now got the LDAT set up on my computer. The luminance sensor is over my gun's barrel and will register any muzzle flashes. And when I fire the weapon, we'll see in the software that we get measurements of the end-to-end -end latency of each shot. Additionally, the software can be configured to cause the mouse to click a repeated number of times on a fixed delay. In this case, I'm gonna have it fire 10 shots with a half second delay in between each shot. For our real measurements, we'll be doing everything in full screen rather than in windowed mode like this. And I'll also be using the repeated auto fire functionality so that we can take several hundred shots and eliminate any variance from the measurements. All right, I took measurements for about four hours off camera. Let's talk results. I began by taking a baseline measurement with my machine in the configuration that I expected to have the lowest system latency. After establishing the baseline, I changed variables one at a time to measure their impact. For all tests, I collected 250 shots worth of data using LDAT's auto fire mode. Hardware wise, I'm running on a 5900X with a 3090 on a 240 Hertz monitor. My game is configured for 1440p and exclusive full screen with all graphics quality settings on low. I've got reflex set to on plus boost and I'm locking the frame rate to 480 FPS using the in-game frame rate limiter. 480 FPS is higher than what I get in a 10 person game and it should be enough to give me a realistic best case for system latency. Importantly, the frame rate cap should reduce noise in the data that could be present with a fluctuating frame rate. Across the 250 shots in the baseline test, 247 had latency between 10 and 25 milliseconds. There was an extreme outlier at 39.4 milliseconds, but it was only a single shot. Some amount of variance like this is expected. The average latency was 15.8 milliseconds and the median latency was 15.56 milliseconds. The median is the middle measurement across all the shots. Median values are less sensitive to outliers than averages, so I'll use them for our comparisons throughout the video. First up, FPS. Conventional wisdom says that more frames per second equals less latency. That's true, but only to a point. Diminishing returns kick in with higher FPS numbers. Moving from 30 to 60 FPS improved latency by a little over 10 milliseconds. Going from 60 FPS to 144 FPS reduced it by another 4 milliseconds. But moving from 144 FPS to 240 FPS only got me 7 tenths of a millisecond. I saw no meaningful improvements on my computer past 240 FPS, but I also only have a 240 Hz monitor. It's possible I would have seen additional benefits with a 360 Hz panel. You might be surprised that the 10 millisecond improvement from 30 to 60 FPS was more than double that of going from 60 to 144 FPS. FPS doesn't scale linearly with time. At 30 FPS, each frame is 33 and a third milliseconds. At 60, it's 16 and two thirds milliseconds. And at 144, it's only 6.94 milliseconds per frame. The 10 milliseconds improvement of going from 30 FPS to 60 FPS is significantly larger than the total frame time at 144 FPS. This non-linear relationship is why game developers prefer to talk about performance in terms of time rather than FPS. Comparing to our baseline, dropping from 240 FPS to 144 FPS increased latency by 0.7 milliseconds. Dropping from 240 FPS all the way down to 60 FPS increased it by 4.5 milliseconds. Clearly frame rate matters. 
Next, let's look at monitor refresh rate, which is the number of times your monitor can show an image per second. It's measured in Hertz. For this test, I changed the refresh rate of my monitor and kept the frame rate locked at 480 frames per second. The graph looks similar to our FPS results. That said, if we compare the refresh rate results to the FPS results, we see that a higher refresh rate monitor capped to a comparable FPS limit has less system latency than the lower refresh rate monitor at a much higher frame rate. Going from a 60 Hz, 480 FPS configuration to a 240 Hz, 60 FPS configuration reduces system latency by 4.5 milliseconds. Even if your computer isn't powerful enough to drive your high refresh rate monitor at its full refresh rate, you will likely still get a benefit from the faster panel displaying the frame sooner. Comparing to our baseline, dropping from 240Hz to 144Hz increases system latency by about 1.8 milliseconds. Dropping from 240Hz to 60Hz increases it by a staggering 9.2 milliseconds. For system latency, refresh rate matters more than frames per second. Sadly, Windows doesn't set refresh rate to the maximum by default. Every month or so, I'll see a tweet from a player discovering that their fancy high refresh rate monitor is incorrectly set to 60 Hz. You should watch Ryan Central's content, by the way. It's great. To double check your configuration, go into Display Settings, click on Advanced Display Settings, and check that the refresh rate is set to the highest available option. If you know you have a high refresh rate monitor and don't see the advertised refresh rate, you might need to change from an HDMI cable to a DisplayPort cable. If this public service announcement reduced your system latency, leave me a comment and let me know. Moving on, VSync. VSync is used to eliminate screen tearing by locking FPS to your monitor's refresh rate. I expected a good frame rate limiter to result in lower system latency than VSync, and that was true in my testing. At every refresh rate my monitor supports, turning on VSync resulted in more latency than the frame rate limiter. In Valorant, we've got a quality frame rate limiter built into the game, and you should prefer it over VSync. Let's talk about the spicy one. Graphics quality settings. They matter, but less than you probably think. On my machine, going from all low to all high increased latency by about 1.4 milliseconds. I generally run a mix of settings that I like to call news settings. My preferred configuration increases latency by 0.7 milliseconds over all low. It also makes the game look a lot better. Note that I'm running on a 3090. Weaker graphics cards are going to see a bigger latency difference. Here are my preferred settings. I turn down detail and UI quality, and I disable improved clarity, distortion, and cast shadows. I keep the other settings cranked up. If you'd like to learn more about what each setting actually does, take a look at my settings video. It's linked in the description below. NVIDIA Reflex is basically a free latency reduction. The details of how Reflex works would take a video by itself, but the short version is that the game and the graphics driver coordinate with timing information to sample input as late as possible in the frame without reducing frame rate. Turning Reflex on improves latency in GPU bound cases. On Plus Boost helps in both those cases and some additional CPU side render bound situations. I get nearly a millisecond improvement in latency by switching Reflex from off to On Plus Boost. This doesn't sound like much, but it's really impressive when you consider that a full frame at 480 FPS is just over 2 milliseconds. At lower FPS, the improvement can be larger. If you don't see the reflex setting and have a 900 series or later NVIDIA GPU, go install the latest graphics driver from NVIDIA. Display mode legitimately shocked me. I knew that exclusive full screen was optimal for latency, but the difference was so huge that I reran the tests three times. Using windowed full screen or windowed display modes absolutely decimates latency. On my machine, I saw nearly 10 milliseconds of additional latency by switching off of exclusive full screen. To put that number in perspective, the degradation is roughly seven times worse than turning all of your graphics quality settings from low to high. It's similar to going from a 240 hertz monitor to a 60 hertz monitor. Alt-Tab is a lot slower in exclusive full screen when compared to windowed full screen, but I'm willing to pay that cost for the latency reduction. Finally, I tested the raw input buffer setting. I observed no significant difference into system latency, which isn't surprising with a 1000 Hz mouse. Explaining this setting also deserves its own video, but the general idea is that mouse input is processed with less overhead when the setting is turned on. 
On newer 8,000 Hertz mice, the overhead of the old way of processing input is enough that it can hurt FPS. From all the data, here are my recommendations. If you can tolerate the slower alt tab, use exclusive full screen instead of windowed full screen. This works on any computer and is a huge win for latency. If you have a high refresh rate monitor, go check that your Windows settings are correct. Seriously, pause the video and do this now. I've included a chapter marker if you've forgotten where the setting lives. Never use VSync in Valorant. Use the in-game frame rate limiter instead. Only use VSync in games where you experience screen tearing that don't have a quality in-game frame rate limiter. Consider politely asking the developers of those games to implement one. Set NVIDIA Reflex to on plus boost if you have hardware that supports it. It's great. You might need to update your graphics driver if you haven't done so recently. Finally, consider your hardware when selecting your graphics quality settings. Turn off anything that you dislike visually. Consider your hardware when deciding whether to enable or disable settings that you do like the look of. If you're on an NVIDIA GPU with a reflex enabled driver, you can approximate the latency impact on your hardware by flipping settings and looking at the render latency stat. That's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. If you'd like to see more deep dives like this, leave me a comment and let me know what you'd like to learn about. Until next time, friends, be kind to one another, and I'll see you in Spike Crush.